Greetings and welcome to Decolonizing Real Estate Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Lindsay Gary. Powered by Gumbo the Podcast, Decolonizing Real Estate Podcast explores the colonial roots of real estate in the Western world. Powered by Gumbo the Podcast, Decolonizing Real Estate Podcast explores the colonial roots of real estate in the Western world. Roots that have historically led to the displacement of Black and Indigenous peoples and hindered their access to land. It does this while acknowledging that although there is an obvious need for land and property, it presents a cultural conundrum as the Western philosophies around land differ greatly from those in traditional African culture. Sitting alongside these ideas, this podcast ultimately speaks candidly about these topics while also working to increase real estate access for African people in this country and abroad from a decolonized and Afrocentric approach. On today's episode, which I'm always excited about, but on today's episode, we'll be discussing real estate for Black community sustainability. And our guest today will be sharing her knowledge, her immense knowledge on this topic and her experiences in real estate. We're joined by Tarsha Gary. The home decision process for every buy, sell, lease, or, or lease merits the attention of a diligent agent who will maintain the client's best interest at all times. Tarsha Gary demonstrates a comprehensive understanding that the real estate agent makes all the difference in the world. Her leadership experience and confident communication style underscores her passion for providing integrity, competency, and energetic negotiations to every real estate transaction. Growing up in Katy, Texas, and having lived in several Houston communities, such as Spring Branch, Jersey Village, Midtown, and the Museum District, has afforded Tarsha a wide range of knowledge of lifestyle and living options, making up this exceptional metropolitan real estate market. Regarded as a people person, which she truly is, Tarsha's mm-hmm. professional background includes her work as an executive, executive chef, a multimedia journalist in radio, TV, and print, and founder of Ecotone World, which is www.ecotoneworld.com. And it's an advocate for urban agriculture, sustainable communities, and youth healthy food education. She is indeed keenly aware of the fact that the vibrant, strong communities start at home and are secured by home ownership. That's so important. And so ready to utilize this latest technology, market research, and business strategies, Tarsha Gary affirms, my job is done when we can celebrate the successful close of your real estate transaction. I look forward to being your trusted realtor. So thank you so much, Miss Tarsha. <laughs> now, I know people are going to be asking, are y'all cousins? They have the same life? Perhaps. We'll just, we'll just we say don't we don't know. know. We don't know, yeah. but perhaps. <laughs> we, 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 do, we do see that visual also, you know. Yes. That my, yeah, we I do. see it too. <laughs> But we don't know right now, right. <laughs> so we continue. Yes, thank you so much for being on the conversation, uh, being a part of this conversation and for, you know, being willing to share your expertise and talk about how important it is for our community, right, to be keen to the things that are going on and how we can also be a part of sustaining um, our Black community. So let's jump in. Thank you again. Let's join in. So tell me first. How did you get started in real estate? You wear a number of hats. She's a chef. She's a painter. I don't even think we mentioned that. She runs an urban garden. Um, She's very involved in our community in Houston. So how did you get involved with real estate? What brought you along that journey? Well, I can tell you, I had my own uh, real estate horror. uh, And I bought a home. I had an agent that... I didn't really know how bad my agent was actually until I went to real estate school. And I found out that I just didn't know a lot about the process. And I really was um, dealing with someone who was a friend. And so, you know, you take that in as that, that has competency inherently and it doesn't. And so uh, I just have gone through a lot of pitfalls in the home ownership buying process. Uh, getting into a loan that was an arm uh, loan, Amer- yeah, and so it continued to go up, go up. So I, 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 I have a, uh, a a a fondness for real estate in that I realized that I wanted to be able to affect my community positively 
by being informed, you know? And so I went through all of those challenges and uh, I said, let me go to real estate school. I mean, you know, that's somebody that I am. When you mention all of these hats that I wear, I am a lover of education, you know, and knowledge and experience and sharing. And so I just naturally have an inclination to go and find out and uh, find out for myself. It's better to be the man in charge instead of being the middleman, you know. And uh, and so this is really kind of a ministry for me um, and my offerings to the community. And that is through getting my real estate license. Now I'm able to offer the trusted integrity that is absolutely needed uh, when you make the most important purchase really in your life, which is real estate. Wow. And what I love about you, I guess, I mean, there's so many things to love, but like what I really love about you is that you saw this, you took your negative experience and turned it into something positive, which I know sounds cliche, but there's so many of us that'll just be like, very, you know, hurt, hell bent, never want to do something to change that circumstance. And you did it not just for yourself, but like for other people. Um, so, and I've, and I've, and I've kind of sensed maybe that type of mindset spills over into other aspects of your life. <laughs> um, like in terms of the other, the other things <laughs> decided to um, pursue. And so, how important, um, is having that mindset that you have, that kind of go-getter mindset important for somebody who may want to become a realtor or who may want to be involved in real estate, whether that's investment or um, development or anything like that? Yeah. Well, first of all, I will say uh, that real estate is not reality TV. Okay. So everybody who is out there watching all of our past time shows, million dollar think you're gonna be a million dollar lister and you're gonna you know flip this house right quick and all of that uh once again this is a professional license uh you you get a lot of information it's a lot of studying um and so it takes a diligent person the other thing is that i came to this uh field with a background having already had my own business having been a chef, an executive chef, having held a catering company, having been a culinary professor, having dealt with people in different arenas is what I'm pointing out. Um, and so what it takes to be a realtor is you have to be a self starter. And uh, that is something that they don't tell you, you know, in real estate school, you know, you, once you get past that, you passed, and I did pass my, uh, get my license on the first test round, which is something to be said about that for a lot of people who have to go it's back. Rare. And take it. Yeah, it has taken a couple of times, but, um, but you, you've got to be diligent. You've got to be focused. You have to, it's not something again, that you can just look at TV and say, oh, I'm going to do that. It takes a lot more than that. And then once you get into the industry, you start right back at the bottom which is, you know, you think, oh, I'm a realtor now, but not really because you haven't had any transactions, you don't know anything. And when you actually get into the real practice of this business, then you realize that this is a lot about contracts, negotiations, uh, interpersonal skills. So if you're someone who doesn't like to deal with people and doesn't, um, you know, can't, uh, you know, randomly, you know, push yourself forward, it might not be the industry for you. That's so, so important. Um, you definitely have to be a starter, be able to take initiative because the business is not necessarily just going to fall in your lap, maybe for some people, but for most of right. us, you have to, you have to be passionate about it or have a lot of drive. Um, you really do. Otherwise, otherwise you're going to have a license yeah. in what? <laughs> well, you won't have it for long. You know, there are a lot of people who can say that they had their real estate license. Mm -hmm. uh, but and and so now that I'm in this industry, I can certainly respect those realtors, um, you know, like your dad, as a matter of fact, who have been in it for years and years, decades. There's something to be said about that, because uh, from, you know, where I entered the business, nobody's really it's every man for himself 
by the way. And so if you are able to find this village, and that's why this topic is important, um, Black community sustainability in real estate. If you're able to connect with this village of uh, people who are willing to take their time like me uh, and uh, see you as somebody, when I, I, I'm not everybody's realtor, by the way. I'm not interested in being everybody's realtor, but for the people that I, I am- I snap on that one. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's not about, uh, this is about community and community building is a painful process. Uh, it's an intimate process. It's one that you have to be passionate and care a lot about. And so uh, if I don't have the right uh, uh, client or prospective client, I'm not interested because it's a lot of my time and my dedication and my energy and I've had to, you know, hike it up the hill of to get this knowledge that I can share to you, you know. And I'm going to stick with my client to the end. Uh, sometimes I will advise them on things that they don't want to hear or uh, that like you're not ready yet, you know. Uh, but I always have the best interest in mind. And I'm not just thinking about a commission. I'm thinking about you being a client for life. And I'm also, again, thinking about our community and how, you know, we become stakeholders in ownership. Very important. And I think um, that's why you're so successful at what you're doing in all realms, because you have integrity. Thank you. you. Know, technically, technically, we're supposed to all have it as uh, people in the real estate industry, but, you know, not many. Yeah. Not many have it. So, <laughs> so you know, so, those, those commissions get thin and it, it, it shows you who people really are. And this market now is another crazy market. It was, you know, uh, here in Texas, it was something that was hand over fist for some people uh, with the pandemic. Right. Uh, everybody was moving to Texas. Everybody still is moving to Texas. And so for some people, they were able to do a lot of business and uh, it was great. And for other people, it was, again, this struggle of just trying to get people ready. And so now we're in a process of so many people came in and took on all of these loans. And now we're going to see so many people being flushed out, you know, too. So readiness is, a, is the key. And having somebody who does have uh, trust and value and integrity is super important. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like you said it perfectly, <laughs> to be honest. And on that note, I want to transition to our topic at hand. I think all of what you're saying gives the context for this, this theme of today's episode around how can we sustain Black communities? We know that um, real estate kind of gets a bad rep, you know, has a bad reputation for um, to, towards the black community. Not, not to say that's the only example, which is why we're here today. But, you know, there are a lot of uh, stories we hear about people being taken advantage of, um, people's neighborhoods essentially being bought out or, you know, people being pushed out of their neighborhoods. And when I say people, I mean black people and other, you know, sometimes people of color. And so we have sometimes this negative association of real estate and that it is not something that's for the black community. But because we live in a society where we have to engage in real estate, if you want to live in this country, right, you have to engage in real estate in some form or fashion, whether you're going to lease an apartment, whether you're going to buy a house, whether you're living in family land with a will or anything like that, involved when somebody uh, transitions, you are, this is a part of the society. And so when we look at that, how can we use something that's a part of our everyday lives for our own benefit? So what are some examples that we can kind of get into that um, our listeners and our audience can take away, whether they are customers or clients or, you know, potential clients, I should say, or people in the real estate industry? How can we sustain our black communities through real estate? Well, I mean, you, you said it all really with all of that, which is that this is not, we don't have a way out on this and nor do we want to get out, right? We deserve to be homeowners, landowners, 
Uh, we have contributed to the society in so many ways, structurally and otherwise. Uh, we certainly are in investors in this society. Now, are we reaping the benefits of our investment? That's what we're talking about. And a lot of times it is, yes, we've suffered a, a great deal. And we're still challenged by uh, communities that have been redlined, right? And we see that even here in this city, as we look at areas like uh, Fifth Ward and uh, just, just several areas where uh, Black people have been marginalized in land that no one should be living on. Uh, and, you know, and then also, you know, we have to become educated. So, you know, again, I would say the first start is to take your time and find someone who can be a partner with you in your goal. And that is to find a good realtor, someone you can trust, uh, someone who has some integrity, do your research. And so, you know, sharing my experience earlier about why I got into real estate and the fact that I, you know, went with a friend is a cautionary tale for other people, which is do your research, go and find a good realtor that's got some track record, that has some client experience ratings, uh, see what other people are saying, and uh, a referral never hurts as well. A lot of our people have struggled to have what little we have or what great we have. Uh, that land, as you mentioned, uh, could be heirs property, uh, could be um, you're acquiring it through airship, you're acquiring it through the death of someone and you have the quick claim deed. There are a lot of different options that you have, but the most important thing is that you hold on to that property. Uh, because property is, you know, money in the bank. And more importantly than money in the bank, it's something that you actually own. That's why they call it real property, because it is something real. And you should pass it down through your family. This is the only uh, wealth that you can truly acquire, uh, you know, and, and pass on. So hold on to the family property. Don't wait to grandma, dad, mom pass away and you say, uh, I'm going to sell it because trust me, you sell it. You'll never get the money uh, that it's worth. You'll never get the money. That money spends very easily. And then you will be in the position of being displaced, which is something that we're talking about now is the displacement of African-American people or people of color, and then not ever being able to regain that position. Um, the other thing is that, um, Every acquisition uh, goes through stages. And so preparedness is very important. And that's the reason why, once again, you want to go back to having a real estate agent who has their, uh, is worth their salt, let's say, uh, because they're going to help you go through these stages. It's not just about, I, I think I got a little bit of money, I'm ready. It, there are going to be uh, processes. Unless you have cash, and hey, cash is always king, no question about it. Uh, but if you don't, then you're going to have to be ready. And what that means is you're going to have to have the credit score that people want to see, the bank wants to see. You're going to have to have a lender that's going to finance you, and they're going to be looking at your employment. They're going to be looking at your proof of income. And so uh, just understanding the strategy behind how they qualify or disqualify you is important and your your realtor will be able to help guide you in that process and what i tell to people i work with um really all phases of real estate commercial leasing residential leasing uh buying and selling property investment property etc and uh and uh, you know million dollar sales etc but um what is important is that you are able to, as I said, qualify the way they want to see you come in. So you've got to have your money to put down. A lot of times people are looking for a first, first time buyer uh, discount or whatever. And that's fine if you find that. But let's go back to the standard of being ready. Have that 20%. That's 20% of the sales price. So that means you got to start saving your money. 
that means that you've got to get your credit score up uh, and and to the credit score end people who are paying their bills and this is very important realize that just paying your bills every month doesn't improve your credit score it's about when you pay your bills right so you've got to pay your bills early or on time in order for that to increase your credit score otherwise it doesn't count for you so paying it late at the end of the month and thinking i paid it this month that doesn't work for you and that doesn't work for the lender more importantly who's going to be financing you this money save your money stop buying these frivolous things you don't need a new car don't buy a new car you don't need you know so this is what we've got to go back to old school of really self-regulating and dealing with uh more uh little uh discretionary funds uh, we have little discretionary funds so we've got to hold on to them and this is something again that we should have gotten out of the pandemic you know there were a lot of uh, tragedies and all of that that came out of the pandemic there were a lot of good things as well and that was to sequester you back to understanding we don't need a lot you know but what we need has to be intentional and therefore we'll get the quality out of it so work with little so that you can make that investment and that you can move out of that apartment that you can stop giving your lease money to somebody else and making them all the money in the world sacrifice right and then that way you'll be able to come up in the end land uh is a good a, a good start sometimes you can find land uh for a smaller investment than a uh, home and hold on to that land and start saving your money so that you can build on that land uh so there there are a lot of different strategies but again preparedness uh is the most important part about it and as i said earlier you know sometimes we're not always ready and we want somebody to tell us the truth and guide us in a way that's going to get us to success uh and so that's the other thing um and then when you do choose a property it's important what you're choosing right because that's your investment so where are you choosing this property where are you choosing this land if you want land and I've had a lot of clients tell me, hey, Tarsha, I found this great place of land, piece of land. It's like, you know, all these acres for this little bit. And I, and I tell them, let me do the research on the land first. Mm -hmm. You know, everything that looks good is not necessarily good. And right. so doing the research means that we're, I'm going to look and see, well, what's running underneath that land? And uh, do you have the gas pipelines? Do you have volatile high? We're looking at these uh, explosions happening everywhere. Right. Those pipelines are not on top of the land. They're under the land. So uh, knowing exactly what you're getting, everything that looks good may not be good. And you want something that is going to appreciate in value. Uh, you want to be in an area that if you decide that you want to resell, that you're going to be able to get your money back and more because this is the reason why you're investing, right? So all of those things make a difference. And for folks that are on the side of um, investment, right, buying multifamily units, uh, a lot of people want to do these Airbnbs and all of this kind of stuff now. Pick an area where people are going to want to come. So understand what your goal is. And then just just don't think about, oh, this is a cheap fourplex. You know, you're going to have to fix that up and you're going to have to look at what's around it. And is that welcoming to your customer or what is your goal? And so this is, again, where I continue to say all roads lead back to a great realtor. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that. I mean, those are some amazing tips. I think it's important for us to understand our direct involvement and sustainability um, and understanding that you have to be ready in order for you to be able to just sustain your own property, right? Right. Because if you're getting into real estate and you really don't have enough, you may have somehow uh, gotten enough to do a down payment, but do you have enough to pay the mortgage? Do you have enough to do the fixer uppers or, you know, things, you know, can happen taxes taxes uh, right uh, you know i mean it's so much to just go. bills period you know? yes exactly 
like they say, you don't want to get in the house and be house poor. And that means that you're in the house now and now you can't maintain it. You you go over people's house, they have no furniture, they have no anything, you know, they might have a nice car in the driveway, but you walk in their house and it's a blank slate. And it's okay if you are starting at that point, but you have to have a plan. Right. And uh, this is part of your plan. You've got to write that out. And uh, again, and you've got to just start checking things off your list. Yeah, I agree. And I also think what you said about uh, maintaining family property is so valuable. We had an episode where we talked a little bit more about um, that, just how to reclaim that family land. A lot of us have heard about having family land, but may not know where it is or how to get to it, what ownership rights they have. And so I just want to reiterate for people who are listening and watching now to make sure you can check out that episode, but also do your due diligence, especially for us black people. You'd be surprised. We actually have a lot of family land that I recently <laughs> heard about uh, just like last week. Um, not kidding. Um, got a call about someone wanting to release our land for mineral rights. Didn't even know we had X, Y, wow. and Z amount of land. Um, right. At, right. And it's, you know what I'm saying? So there's, there's so much out there that we have to work on preserving. And then also in terms of us sustaining our communities, really thinking about buy, you know, buying in black areas. I've heard people say, you know, well, I don't want to buy in that area. You know, not every black area is an area you want to live in, but how can we make sure we're preserving our actual black communities? What ways can we do that? Yeah, well, you know, for those of us who uh, have lived or live in black areas or work or function and, and uh, uh, we mentioned the community garden, uh, which is a piece that I have in third ward, which is a, was a predominantly black area. I say was, um, and, and, and who are interested in these also people who are interested in doing things environmentally, right? Uh, the garden for me is land that is green space. And what am I doing? How is that sustainable? to the community well it's bringing green space to a black community and also health and nutrition but um which is very important very important i I mean it's a part of life if you don't have green space you know this is part of uh, having as you said earlier in my um bio this comprehensive community sustainability you've got to have walkable bikeable neighborhoods you've got to have grocery stores all of that is part of real estate and so um you know this all works together i kind of lost track of what your question was oh i'm sorry Uh, um just uh yeah i'm sorry about that just basically looking at um you know what ways we can sustain in that way um and i think i lost my point too i think no okay so yeah We can sustain by, uh, again, acquiring the property, first of all, maintaining the property. And also in in black areas, and where I was going with that is, there's so much gentrification uh, that it's almost hard to say what's a black area now because it's transitioning so fast and there's being, there's so much displacement. Uh, It's really kind of scary. And so this is the reason why we have to understand that we've got to take a firm hold on our communities and we have to make our communities great uh, where we want to live, right? Uh, I have been championing in Third Ward uh, with the garden from since 2009. And, uh, and you know, what have we combated? We've combated dumping. So this is things that people are doing to abuse the land, abuse the aesthetic, uh, drive your property values down, uh, perhaps affect crime. All of these things go into uh, impacting what makes our community sustainable. Uh, if you are someone who owns land in, in communities that maybe you don't want to live in, maybe you own property there, become a valued landlord, please. A slum landlord, we, you know, we'll say that again. we don't need you anymore. We don't, we don't need you. We don't need you. You're not helping and you're not helping. So uh, for those of us who have lived in places where uh, the landlord is taking advantage of those residents, those tenants, 
etc. I encourage you to become uh, civically active. All right, say something, ring the alarm, everybody get together, and we're not going to tolerate landlords who are just robbing the tenants, right? Who don't care about people's money and their investment and don't care about the property that they own as well. So there are a lot of things, but you have to get in this fight and you have to fight the good fight, right? We want to keep our schools safe. School districts, people buy property because the school district is great. So yeah, go to those parent-teacher meetings, go to the PTA, raise the flag that we're not going to have a school that's not functioning properly for our young people in our community. Uh, and people are going to want to live there. You know, people want grocery stores in their community. Uh, part of my work with the garden is to eradicate food deserts. So that means that, yeah, we need viable grocery stores and we need the education that we can grow our own food on our own land. Or uh, even if your land is just a little pot and container in front of your house, uh, we've got to have control of that. And so, um, again, I invite uh, your audience listening and viewing to contact me. Um, you can reach me via email, which is Tarsha.Gary at CBUnited.com. Uh, I'm on Instagram as Chef Tarsha. I have refused to do a dedicated realtor Instagram because I, as you said, I've got so many hats and who wants to, I don't want to update everything. Let me just do one thing. And so when you go to Chef Tarsha on Instagram, then you will see it says Chef Tarsha, the, the grand damn chef, and the Texas realtor, and the this and the this and that. The, it's me. You see this smiling face? It's me. Uh, hit me up there. I, I'm Tarsha Realtor, Tarsha Gary Realtor on Facebook. You, I'm not hard to find. Or contact Gumbo Podcast and 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 beg Dr. Lindsay Gary to uh connect you with her older sister. <laughs> well, thank you so much, uh chef, realtor, journalist, artist, um uh, just amazing woman that you are for sharing. Um it's it, so important for us to understand how we can individually and collectively sustain our communities and I I wanted to just wrap up one point that what you the last few statements you made, you talked about how real estate is connected to every other aspect of our life. Real estate is connected to the kind of schools our children go to, what kind of food we're gonna eat, what kind of food we have access to. Just so many things are connected to that. Um, it's not anything to take lightly, and it is something that's urgent. Uh, we're not saying rush into buying property. That's not not my point. But it's urgent that we take a hold of our communities. That is nothing that we can, um, you know, let kind of just pass us by, especially with things changing so rapidly. And I will say this, too, even if you're not in a position where you're ready to like buy, you know, just do your due diligence and learning how the market works, but also supporting, um, sharing good realtors doing the work, uh, going to things like um Ecotone World and the the Urban Garden that um, is in Third Ward, just supporting community efforts and staying civically engaged. That all goes into it, um, so you don't have to feel like it's something that you have to go out and buy immediately, or you know, find something immediately for you to have a direct impact um, on the overall community sustainability. So, just thank you so much for sharing your knowledge, being open enough. I think that's another thing. A lot of times, people don't want to share what they know and so right. um, this is why we have this, this platform to share and for people to become more informed to go out and do that kind of good work that you mentioned so i hope um you all enjoyed hearing from uh our amazing guests um thanks again and be sure to connect with decolonizing real estate podcast um you can find us on our website gumbothepodcast.com um, our Instagram is Gumbo the Podcast. And if you'd like to connect with me as a realtor, my Instagram is Realtor Lynn. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.